We're asked to graph the piecewise function, then determine f of 0, f of 3, and f of 6. Notice how the piecewise function has three pieces, and notice each piece is a linear function. Also remember, it takes two points to graph a line. Let's begin by determining a point on the line y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4 for x less than or equal to negative 6. We'll do this using a table of values. Remember, since our denominator is 3 here, if we pick a multiple of 3 for x, the y-coordinate will be an integer, which will be easier to plot. So let's select x equals negative 6, which is in the interval x is less than or equal to negative 6 and is a multiple of 3. And now let's find the corresponding y-value. We have y equals negative 2 thirds times x, which is negative 6, or negative 6 over 1, plus 4. Simplifying before multiplying, notice 3 and negative 6 share a common factor of 3. There is 1, 3, and 3. There are two 3's and 6, but because we have negative 6, negative 6 simplifies to negative 2, which gives us y equals Negative 2 times negative 2 all over 1 is just positive 4 plus 4, which is equal to 8. Let's go ahead and plot this point on the coordinate plane. So again, we have negative 6 comma 8, which is here. Again, it's a closed point here because x equals negative 6 is in the interval x is less than or equal to 6 for the function rule, y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4. Now also notice the slope of this line is negative 2 thirds. So if m is equal to negative 2 thirds, remember the slope gives us the change of y over the change of x, sometimes referred to as the rise over the run. So from this point, we want to find a point on the left of this point, again because the interval is x is less than or equal to negative 6. Notice from this point, if we go down 2 and right 3, x would be negative 3, which is not in the interval, x less than or equal to negative 6. So let's write the slope as positive 2 over negative 3. Using this form of the slope, we would go up 2 and left 3. So if we go up 2 and left 3, notice how the x-coordinate of this point is in the interval where x is less than or equal to negative 6. Let's go and sketch the line to the left of x equals negative 6. Of course, we also could have just found a second point on the line by selecting an x value that's a multiple of 3 less than negative 6, for example, negative 9. If we substitute x equals negative 9 into the linear equation, we would get y equals 10, which happens to be this point here that we just found on the left. The next function rule is y equals negative 4, only when x is greater than negative 6 and less than or equal to positive 3. Notice how negative 6 is not in the interval, so we will have an open point at x equals negative 6. x equals 3 is in the interval, and therefore we have a closed point at x equals 3. And the graph of y equals negative 4 is a horizontal line passing through the y-axis at negative 4. So to graph this piece, let's go to negative 6 on the x-axis, and then down to negative 4 for the y-axis, which would be here, and make an open point. Again, it's open because x equals negative 6 is not in the interval where x is greater than negative 6. And we have a horizontal line to the right all the way out to x equals 3, which is here. And we have a closed point at x equals 3, again, because x equals 3 is in the interval. And then finally, we have y equals 2x minus 3 when x is greater than 3. 3 is not in the interval, and therefore we'll have an open point on the line y equals 2x minus 3 to start this piece. So let's select x equals 3 for our table and substitute 3 for x in the equation to find the corresponding y value. y is equal to 6 minus 3, which is equal to 3. So the point 3 comma 3 would be an open point on the line y equals 2x minus 3. Let's plot that point. 3 comma 3 is here, make an open point. And then from here, notice the slope of this line is 2, or 2 over 1. So using the slope 2 over 1, if we go up 2 and write 1, the x value is positive 4, which is in the interval x greater than 3. So now we can go ahead and sketch the line on the right. 
Another way to graph this piece would be to find a second point on the line. For example, when x is equal to four, notice how y is equal to two times four, which is eight minus three, which is five. And four comma five is the second point that we found using the slope. And now let's find the function values f of zero, f of three, and f of six. To find the function value f of zero, notice x equals zero is in the interval where x is greater than negative six and less than or equal to positive three, and therefore we use the function rule y equals negative four, and therefore f of zero is negative four. And we can verify this graphically. If we look at the graph, notice when x is equal to zero, if we go down to the function, the function value or y value is negative four. Next we have f of three. Notice x equals three again is in the interval where x is greater than negative six and less than or equal to positive three, and therefore the y value or function value again is negative four. If we go back to the graph, notice when x equals three, the closed point is down here where the y value or function value is negative four. And then finally we have f of six. x equals six is in the interval where x is greater than three, and therefore we use the function rule y equals two x minus three to find f of six. Substituting six for x, we have two times six minus three, which is 12 minus three, which is equal to nine. Going to the graph, when x equals six, we can see the function value is positive nine. I hope you found this helpful.